You're watching Good Morning Suncoast at 5. Overnight heavy rain swept through the Sun Coast. We'll tell you what to expect throughout the morning. Plus, they are out 18 days later, and that soccer team, along with their coach, are finally out of that cave in Thailand. And we're covering this morning. We've got an update on the condition of some of those kids. And it's that time of year. Mosquitoes, what you can do to protect yourself from those unwanted bites. Good morning, Suncoast starts right now. And good morning, it's 5 o'clock. Glad you're with us. It is Wednesday, July 11th. I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Stephanie Webb. Thanks for waking up with us this morning. Overnight, some big storms in the area. Are they going to be continuing throughout the day, John? Are we just going to put them to bed? Mother Nature keeping us humble yesterday. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, we had some uh, big storms moving through late in the evening, actually. The sunset was beautiful. Most of the day, plenty of sunshine. And then, boom, the other... Sea breeze from the other coast. The East Coast sea breeze moved into our area and boom, showers and thunderstorms built probably around 9, 10 o'clock. They're certainly blossoming around 11 o'clock and then now they're moved out into the Gulf waters and that's where they're going to be throughout the day today. They'll continue to move away from shore, but there's still some lightning pops and you still make it a little bit of a light show just offshore just like we saw yesterday, only it was a little bit further to the north. So those showers that moved on through now continue a drift that takes them further from the coastline. We'll have a fair amount of sunshine, I think, as dawn breaks on the Sun Coast a little later this morning. We'll watch temperatures start to rise. We'll get up to near 92 again today and plenty and plenty of uh, dry air giving us a, a nice sunny day. Uh, we'll watch Chris continue to pull away from the United States as it does so. That dry air that it was pulling down is reduced and we start to get moisture back into the picture. Our rain chance today higher than yesterday, coming in at about 20% later in the evening, most particularly 10% by around 3 p.m. By 7 p.m. tonight, probably around 20% or maybe a little better. We'll have the complete forecast for you coming up in a few. All right, thank you so much, John. First, check this out. You are looking at Hurricane Chris from space. It's now a Category 2 storm with winds topping out at about 105 miles per hour. The National Hurricane Center says Chris marks the earliest formation of a season's second hurricane since way back in 2005. Boy, here we go, 502 right now. There's a live shot from our camera at Bee Ridge and Tuttle. Busy spot there out in uh, Sarasota County. As that morning progresses, we'll see more and more cars around there. Busy spot indeed on Bee Ridge at Tuttle. Let's go to our traffic maps now and find out what's going on there. Not too much, a little, a little blip there on State Road 70 in the eastbound lane. Have to get past 301, otherwise pretty clear in Manatee County. Checking farther south now, the northern half of Sarasota County. Some issues out there on Siesta Key around Siesta Village. Also 41 southbound as you cross over Stickney Point Road. And then our final map to the south will show some buildup there already on 41 southbound as you travel from Nokomis toward Venice. Well, summer means days at the beach, bonfires with friends, long bike rides, this guy. Yeah. But it can also mean plenty of mosquitoes that are out in full force. Marla Spence is look at what Sarasota County is doing now to manage mosquitoes on the Sun Coast and how you can protect yourself. Marla? Hey guys, good morning. Yeah, those pesky little bites are among one of the most annoying things to endure this summer. I had the chance and the opportunity of going to the a laboratory for the Sarasota County's Mosquito Management Office. Scientists and technicians there say there are about 34 species of mosquitoes just in Sarasota County alone. Now, if that number <coughs> sounds alarming, just hear this. There are over 90 species in Florida and hundreds more across the globe. Taylor Greenan with the Mosquito Management Office says insects tend to be out mostly between May and October and sunrise and sunset. Now, in an effort to reducing the risk of public health issues due to mosquitoes, technicians and inspectors go out to several locations like ditches or areas where they're standing water and then they do that and they, they go to those areas to control and also monitor the population of mosquitoes. So we're constantly monitoring the populations. We use a variety of traps to get certain types of species, ones that might cause different issues. In addition to the traps, obviously we're identifying them to pinpoint where they're coming from and where the problem might be. We're also larviciding, which is when we use chemicals or different practices to eliminate larva. And then we also will adulticide if necessary if populations reach a certain point. 
Now, in order to protect yourself this summer, it's recommended that you wear repellent like this, and it has to be registered by the Environmental Protection Agency or EPA. Also, wear long sleeves and make sure that you are tossing any standing water that you might be having that's laying outside your home. Back to you guys. All right, thanks so much, Marla. Well, caught on camera, an explosion rocked the downtown area of Madison, Wisconsin yesterday. Officials say a contractor accidentally struck a natural gas line, which injured two firefighters, a police officer, and leveled buildings in the area. Nearby residents, including those in a nursing home, all had to be evacuated. Seven weeks of separation has ended for an immigrant father and four-year-old son in Texas. This is uh, Walter Melendez being reunited with his uh, son, Jeremy. The two were separated when they tried to enter the country from Mexico 48 days ago. They're from El Salvador. Similar scenes played out across the country yesterday as federal officials reunited families. Well, another round of tariffs on Chinese goods is on the way. Now, these could be worth about $200 billion and include tariffs on things like seafood, fruits and vegetables, wool, baseball gloves, and other similar products that are all imported from China. Now, that move comes after the U.S. imposed their own tariffs on other Chinese goods worth about $34 billion last Friday. Then it was a back and forth. China responded with tariffs of their own on U.S. goods for about the same amount. With these summer temperatures on the rise in the Sun Coast, a reminder about leaving kids and pets in hot cars. Each year nationwide, an average of 38 kids and hundreds of dogs die from heat stroke. Experts suggest reducing the risk of forgetting your pet or child in the car by using the acronym ACT. The A stands for avoid a heat stroke by never leaving your child in a car alone, not even for a second. C stands for create. Experts suggest you create reminders Put something in the back of your car next to your child, such as a purse or a cell phone. And lastly, T, take action. If you ever see a child or a dog in a car alone, call 911 and stay with the victim. A heads up for Thursday, a precautionary boil water notice is being posted for businesses in Cortez Plaza. A water main repair is scheduled for that day. Now the water is going to be shut off from about midnight to around 4 a.m. Now once service is restored, all the water used for drinking or cooking should be boiled initially as a precaution. Of course, we're going to update you when the advisory is lifted. And be sure to download our free AB7 app so you can get notices like these along with breaking news and first alert weather updates. Now to a warning from Bradenton police after an increase in scam phone calls that threaten people with arrests. The caller usually claims the victim has outstanding warrants for their arrest or they owe money to the IRS. Police say you should never give out personal information to anybody who calls and claims to be with the IRS. A thief who broke into homes in Holmes Beach last month and beat up the homeowners could be connected to other burglaries. Many stolen items were found in a storage unit belonging to the suspect at Hideaway Storage on Cortez Road in Bradenton. Holmes Beach Police say this indicates there may be other victims of Mark Snyder. He's the 55-year-old who was recently arrested for robbing a home on 75th Street and beating up the 71-year-old homeowner. Hundreds of items were found in that storage shed, including guns, artwork, jewelry, bicycles, and other things. It's great to get this kind of person off the streets and and be able to recover th this amount of property that was found so hopefully we'll be able to put all the pieces together and and connect the dots with all the victims it was extremely shocking um but i would say burglaries happen more than you think out on the island uh canal access is very easy snyder remains behind bars with bail set at fifty thousand dollars police will release pictures of all the stolen items in the near future with the hope that many more victims will come forward. Well, if you live in Manatee County, there's an app that can help you keep up to date with crimes in your area in real time. It's called Neighbors, and you can download it for free right now. The hope is that it can deter help deter crime in some neighborhoods. It allows neighbors to also share suspicious activity in their neighborhoods with police. Sarasota Police use a similar app. It's called Next Door. It also gives residents a similar service. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, the soccer team might be out of the Thailand cave this morning, but the recovery process has only just begun. Why the boys and their coach have to be quarantined now for up to a week. 
And coming up a little later, another day, another scam alert. We're going to tell you about the warning that Bradenton police have for residents there. But first. 509, here's a shot outside our window at the Rosemary District. Looks like a nice day. Let's find out from Professor John Scalzi. Well, sir, I think we are going to have a pretty decent day today, certainly for your drive to work. We're not going to worry about any of these boxes being checked, but I have checked the rain box for the trip home. There is a slight chance that it's seeing some showers around again later in the day. We'll call them late day showers with a temperature in the upper 80s on the way home. All of the airport hubs serving Sarasota Bradenton International running on time according to the FAA. Your forecast coming up in a sec. Everything all right? Actually, you know how Tom had knee surgery? Sure. We found out Brad's been taking his painkillers. It turns out he's been doing it for a while. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. Me, pick me, me, me. Oh, come on, man. Oh, man, I love technology. Hey, yo, check out my new phone. Look at this right here. For years, the DeSoto Club has needed improvements. Join me and Boys and Girls Club of Manatee County as we raise money to build a brand new facility. It will be bigger and better, just like it was 40 years ago when I attended. Invest in kids, build great futures. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. 70. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. There was this big bruise on my friend's face. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to think her own nephew could have hit her. I didn't want to see it. My mother's bank account was emptied and a caregiver had taken control of it. I didn't want to see it. My father's refrigerator, there was hardly anything in it. That's unusual for him. It's tough to see that a senior citizen is being abused, physically, emotionally, sexually, or financially. Elder abuse is a crime. So see the signs, stop the crimes. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. My name is Haley. I have fragile leg syndrome. I work with Chartwells at Einstein's at FAU. I like being up front and um, interacting with students. The students are very nice and very hungry. Having a job is a big ticket for independence. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. ABC 7 First Alert Weather Forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. 77 degree air temperature this morning with a feels like index of about the same 78 degrees. Dew point value warm coming in at 75. All that moisture from the clouds and rain yesterday evening now has to re-evaporate. And that is going to bring us some high humidity this afternoon. Uh, calm winds currently. They'll be switching a little bit more southeasterly than southwesterly as we head through the day. So by 3 p.m. we'll have about a 10% chance of a shower around, I think, with the temperature coming in around 92. Feels like temperature coming in around 100 to 105. And then as we head into the evening, a better chance of rain showers by 7 p.m. Probably through around 10, 11 o'clock. We'll have about a 20% chance of a shower or two. And then as you wake up tomorrow morning, expect to see a temperature of about 76. So there's Chris. 
Continuing to move further away from the United States, we're left with this general easterly flow today, becoming more southwesterly, pushing the showers further out into Gulf waters. A couple of pops of lightning just off the Pinellas coastline. If you're traveling over the Skyway Bridge this morning, you're likely going to see that light show um, off to the west. Across our region, not a drop of rain falling, and nor do we expect any for your morning commute. Right straight through the morning into the afternoon. I think we'll probably see just plenty of sunshine around. These showers out in the Gulf kind of dot the landscape out there, but they're a pretty good distance offshore. So if you're boating this morning, don't think you're going to have much of a problem here unless you're really far offshore heading out in that direction in a fast boat. Then you may have some uh, issues out there. We're watching, Chris, of course, a very well-defined Category 2 hurricane continuing to race away from the United States now. Picked up by a trough of low pressure, it sets into motion that kind of atmospheric uh, steering currents. It's also going to take what's left over of barrel and move it out into the open waters as well. So we're looking good in terms of any kind of tropical influence, with the exception of this one little upper level low pressure area that's over the Bahamas right now. You can see it as this line of clouds right there. That is gradually going to drift closer to South Florida, enhance rainfall chances in that regard. So barrel lifts off, moves off to the north and to the east. Chris, now a Category 2 storm, also lifts off to the north and to the east, moving at about 20 miles per hour. Um, it can't sustain that uh, kind of circulation around its core very long at 20 miles per hour. So I would expect it to start to disintegrate here over the course of the next day or so, becoming a Category 1 storm and then eventually just really hurtling across the Atlantic waters up toward Greenland, actually, so or Iceland. Uh, we're looking at this um, trough of low pressure that's helping to pick up the uh, storms. High pressure building in back behind it, providing us with a westerly wind as we head into the next several days. That will favor by the weekend a little bit more moisture around here and showers building along the coastline in the morning and then moving into inland areas. Mostly sunny today, a few evening showers and then better weekend rain chances today. A trough of low pressure helping to enhance showers down in the southern tip of the state. This is the moisture available for rain showers. Redder is wetter, and you can see what that trough does kind of moving closer to us, bringing us better rain chances as we head into the evening. For boating today, pretty nice. Southwest wind at about 10 knots, becoming more westerly at about 10 knots. Light chop anticipated. 92 today, 20% chance of rain. Same thing tomorrow. Then we'll start to up the rain chances a little bit as we head into the weekend to about 40%, and then next work week, Probably a 40 or 50 percent chance of storms as we return to a more typical summertime pattern. Back to you. All right. Thanks so much, John. Let's take a look outside and check out your first alert traffic out there this morning. We do have a couple delays. We've got, already got some backups that are already starting right there on State Road 70 as well. The bridges are looking good coming into Bradenton so far. The rest of Manatee County is also looking pretty decent so far. In the top half of Sarasota County, those roads again looking pretty good so far this morning. If you're headed south in the area, both 75 and 41 are not running too bad at all this morning, so you're going to have a pretty easy commute. It is 518. That is your first alert traffic. Finally free after an agonizing 18 days, 12 young soccer players and their coach have been rescued in Thailand. Now this is video of the cave in which they were trapped. Reporter Dave McKenzie takes us through the cave. This is the spectacular entrance of the Tam Luan cave system and the boys had no idea when they came in here that the rains would flow in and that their saga would capture the world's attention. But they had to flee deeper into the cave system as the water streamed in. And it was here when the rescuers first mobilized to get them out. The boys survived by drinking water from the roof and they didn't eat any food for nine days. You can imagine their joy when a British diver popped up through the water nine days after they went missing. Everyone thought that they were dead and that was the beginning of this incredible rescue mission. When they started their mission the water was much higher than where it is now. You can see the measuring stick and they pumped water out 24 hours a day for days and days down the mountain. That allowed them the space in the roof of the caverns to get in with those expert divers and a short enough distance to bring the boys out. 
And the last people to emerge were the four Thai Navy SEALs after those incredible days of rescue. No one thought they could pull this rescue off, but they did, using a combination of expert divers and incredible teamwork. David McKenzie, CNN, inside the cave in Chiang Rai. Any doubt this will be a movie at some point soon? Oh, it already is. Actually, I just read that yesterday. <laughs> really? Yeah, there's a faith-based uh, movie company that's already picked up. They were actually there on site. Yeah. Uh, they kind of jumped in. He was uh, the CEO of the movie company was helping with the rescue, so wow. he is already working. There's already a plan in place. How many times do the players stay inside? Whose idea was to say that? <laughs> well, it is kind of good because a lot of people are worried about the coach getting in trouble, but the parents actually wrote these letters of support saying, hey, it's okay, we don't blame the coach. You know, this is something the kids wanted to do as well. So. 5.20 right now. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, is the iPhone X going away anytime soon? Well, it may be, but the popular iPhone model might be replaced by some other things later on this year. And next half hour, President Trump is in Brussels for the NATO summit. The plans ahead for the first stop of his eventful European tour. Here is the house he left behind, <laughs> 1600 Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue. It's very quiet there. Even the light is off in the kitchen. They're there. all gone. They're all in Brussels. It is 79 right now in Washington. They'll see a high today of 89 degrees in the nation's capital. And the pretty flag lit up top there. It does. Beautiful. You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast on ABC7. During the past 10 years, Tidewell Hospice volunteers have provided more than 1 million hours of service. They sit with patients, giving caregivers a break. They work in offices. They take their furry friends on pet therapy visits. They even clown around. Every task performed by a volunteer makes a difference in the lives of our patients and their families. Join Tidewell's volunteer team. They're truly one in a million. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. My name is Julius. I have cerebral palsy. I work for Farmer Jaffe Weising Law Firm. I do a lot of data entry and scanning documents. I want to increase my working experience to make the company much better. At the end of the day, it's good to think of the day's work and to think about what I have accomplished. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. This is your brain, this is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Um, yeah, I have questions. Prescription drugs aren't as bad as street drugs, right? Weed's legal, isn't it? Drinking is worse than smoking weed. Isn't it? Why it is heroin, heroin so, so addictive? Molly just makes you feel happy. I have questions. Mom? Dad, did you ever try drugs? They're going to ask. Be ready. Go to drugfree.org. A message from Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. It's been about a month, and I can honestly say I've seen the change in me. I went from being a depressed girl who didn't want help to this happy, caring girl who loves helping other people. I just really hope that people that went through what I went through get the help that they need because their story is important and they are loved. Thank you so much for everything. King. Go fish! In your face, in your face, in your it only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. And caught on camera, check out this time lapse of a dust storm in Arizona. Earlier this week, they were hit with monsoon storms with heavy rain and winds, some up to 70 miles an hour. More than 84,000 people in that area lost power. But wow. that is one amazing yes. dust storm, the way it just rolls all across like that. Bad weather is coming. It is. <laughs> it is across the there desert.
Well, deals at Whole Foods are now included in that Amazon Prime Day coming this month. And one of the iPhone models is going away this fall. The stories in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Whole Foods is joining Amazon Prime Day with free money. The Amazon-owned grocery chain is offering Prime members a $10 credit to use during Prime Day when they spend more than $10 at Whole Foods over the next week. Amazon Prime Day begins Monday, July 16th. It appears time is already running out for the iPhone 10. Reports say the company will discontinue the phone this year before three new phones are unveiled in the fall. The claim comes after several reports say iPhone 10 sales have been sluggish. The military is using technology to cut costs on a bathroom necessity. The Pentagon was under fire for spending $10,000 on toilet seat covers for certain planes. The price soared when the manufacturer discontinued the covers but kept making them for the military. The Air Force is now 3D printing the toilet seat covers for just $300. Those are your Tech Bites. Tech Bites. Sponsored by Sherwin-Williams Paint. Salads should look like this. Crisp leaves of lettuce, freshly made dressing, clean food that looks this good, delivered to your desk. Now delivering to home or office. Panera, food as it should be. At McCormick, we're obsessed with flavor. It's why we partner with sustainable farmers to find the finest herbs and spices and blend perfectly balanced seasoning mixes. But you don't need to know all that. You just need your food to taste great, which we promise it will. I took my first handful of pills, and that's when all my priorities seemed to change. He would ask to use the bathroom in other people's homes. He just assumed that they would have medication. He'd go in their medicine cabinets and steal prescription drugs. I wish I knew really what these prescription pills were. We were so naive about the whole drug thing. These are all synthetic forms of heroin. Keep your medication locked up because you'll never notice that a pill is gone. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. I am the resident district manager on the FAU campus for Chartwell. Whenever I see Haley, I do not see a person with a disability. I see a person with extraordinary abilities. Haley is always smiling. She's always on time. She gives fantastic customer service and is always focused on any job that she's given. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Ever since I can remember, I've been intrigued by industrial design and the optimization. Wait, that's passion? Ever since I can remember, my passion has been industrial design. We need 3D printers for Miss Adams' engineering program so that we are ready to solve 21st century challenges. Impressive. Think It Up is a new initiative to support student-powered, teacher-led learning projects. Students and teachers, how can you spark great learning experiences in your classroom today? Think It Up. My name is Luke Perry, and I am one million strong. I'm in the fight against colorectal cancer because I believe we can win it. Colon and rectal cancers are the second leading cause of cancer deaths among men and women in the U.S. Colon cancer is preventable. Know the risk factors and make sure to get screened. There are simple take-home options available. Take control of your health. Screening for colon cancer isn't embarrassing. It can be life-saving. To find out more about your options, visit fightcrc.org. Here we go. We're gonna go out there in the rain. You're gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, no. oh, no. Oh, yeah, yes. So much fun. Yeah, Hi, I'm Janelle Hale, founder and CEO of the National Breast Cancer Foundation. No one should face breast cancer alone. When I was diagnosed 36 years ago, there was no internet, and I had to make a decision with little information. 
Early detection saved my life. It could save yours too. To learn what every woman needs to know about breast cancer, visit nbcf.org slash hope. You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 5.30. Happening today, President Trump has arrived in Belgium for the NATO summit with a tough message. We'll tell you what's on the agenda for today. Brace yourself for mosquito season. We've got some tips to keep you safe this summer. And an ordinary moment as a family welcomes a new baby. Well, what's extraordinary is just how many kids this family has added in the past 15 years. We're going to have that story plus your first alert forecast straight ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast. You know, when I grew up, big families were pretty common. Yeah, I'm lots of kids were more common. I'm now these days, it's like I see more like single family parents. I'm one of six kids. Yeah. Back then, it was no big deal. Right. Now, it's a lot of kids. John Scalzi is an only child. How about that segue or lack thereof? He is. Yes. And happy to be so. That's right. <laughs> Got all the attention. <laughs> Look what happened. That explains a lot. That explains a lot, right? <laughs> so we have some showers out in Gulf Waters right now, some pops of lightning going on out there as well. You'll get a light show near the coastline as you look out toward Gulf Waters. That's not coming toward us. It continues to press further away from us, in fact. A lot of lightning all up and down the coastline, actually, as that line of showers continues to make it slow drift. We had some pretty good thunder boomers around yesterday, even some one inch rainfalls in some locations so some pretty good downpours now we have lots of sunshine in store for us the cloud cover out in gulf waters we have across our region some pretty good potential for lots of sun throughout most of the day today in fact chris continues to pull away from the united states drier air being replaced by more moisture and we start to see better rain chances today our rain chance tops out probably at about 20 percent 10% by around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but then as we head into the uh, later part of the afternoon, into the evening hours, we'll bump it up to about a 20% chance. That's a complete forecast for you coming up in a few. All right, thank you, John. Our live camera right now is stationed at a busy intersection. There's B Ridge and Tuttle. There'll be plenty of traffic as the morning commute progresses there. Not too much so far at 531. We'll check back on that camera every half hour. There's the roads right now in Manatee County. You'll see a buildup on 301 southbound as you cross Samoset back toward uh, State Road 70. Otherwise, not too bad in Manatee County. Checking farther south now in the northern half of Sarasota County, Clark Road westbound as you leave the interstate area and head toward Honore. And then our final map to the south will show us uh, not much to speak of right now at 532 on your Wednesday morning. Well, mosquitoes are in full force this summer as you protect yourself. You should also keep your pets in mind because there are some serious risks associated with mosquito bites. Our Marla Spence tells us what the government is doing to protect your pets. Marla. Hey, good morning, guys. Mosquitoes may be annoying for us, but they can be extremely dangerous if your pet is bitten by a mosquito. Scientists and technicians with the Sarasota County Mosquito Management Office says this summer you should keep a close eye on your dog. So far, there are 34 species of mosquitoes here on the Sun Coast, and if just one of those species get to your dog, it could put them at risk for heartworms, which could be deadly. Taylor Greenan with the Mosquito Management Office says insects, those insects in particular, tend to be out mostly during sunrise and sunset. It's recommended when you're taking your dog out for a walk to try to keep that in mind to reduce the risk of heartworms. Greenan tells us exactly how dogs can get the deadly parasite from, from a mosquito. So inside the heart, um, the worm is transmitted by mosquitoes. So this is a parasitic worm that can grow inside things like dogs, and when the worm builds up in the organism system, the mosquito, if it bites that dog, can then get the parasitic worm inside of it. If it bites another dog, it can then transmit that parasitic worm into a following dog. Now, there is no repellent for dogs, so the best way to protect them is by taking them to the veterinary for ways to prevent heartworms. Now, in the meantime, Sarasota County is working to control the number of mosquitoes by catching Gambuja herberkey, which is a mosquito fish. Now, they are bred in-house at the Mosquito Management Office and then released to areas where there is standing water. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you so much, Marla. Well, President Trump is going to be meeting with European heads of state today as they attend the summit at the NATO headquarters in Brussels. Andrew Spencer has today's agenda. For President Donald Trump, the NATO summit kicked off this morning with a bilateral breakfast with NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. We have a very good relationship. 
because of me, they've raised about uh, $40 billion over the last year. So I think the Secretary General likes Trump. We will. He may be the only one, but that's okay with me. Some of the president's meetings could be tense this week. Even before Air Force One landed in Belgium, President Donald Trump had taken to Twitter, criticizing America's NATO allies for not contributing more money toward defense and criticizing the EU for what he calls barriers to trade, comments not taken lightly by the European Council. America, appreciate your allies. After all, you don't have that many. Trump made similar complaints about European military spending during a campaign rally last week as he continues to pressure NATO member countries to commit at least 2% of GDP to defense budgets. I'm going to tell NATO, you got to start paying your bills. The United States is not going to take care of everything. With the president taking a somewhat confrontational approach, the U.S. Senate took up a non-binding motion on Tuesday offering their support for NATO. The measure passed overwhelmingly, 97 senators voting in favor of it, the only two no votes coming from Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky and Senator Mike Lee of Utah. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. A developing story out of Japan, recovery is underway after its worst floods in almost four decades. Torrential rains unleashed huge flash floods and landslides that have killed at least 155 people. Dozens more are missing or unaccounted for, and rescuers are going home to home looking for anybody who might still be trapped. Two million people were forced to leave their homes, and thousands remain without power or running water. A sharp turn here at 536, a sad day in the world of dogs. Zsa, Zsa the Minnesota canine, recently the world's ugliest dog, has passed away. The nine-year-old English bulldog, known for her huge tongue, died in her sleep. Zsa, Zsa lived in a Missouri puppy mill for five years before she was bought by a nonprofit. Well, no more peanuts. That's the message from Southwest Airlines today. The airline will stop offering the iconic travel snack beginning August 1st. Now, Southwest says it wants passengers with those peanut allergies to feel safe on every one of their flights. And of course, peanuts, they've been a long part of the Southwest Airlines culture as well as, well as the rest of the airline industry in general for many years. Not to worry, though, Southwest passengers will still get some free snacks like pretzels and cookies and chips. And take a look at this. Bugatti has released a sneak peek of its new $6 million supercar just in time from a paycheck this week. And the new supercar's hefty price tag is twice as much as its current top model. For now, though, they're just sharing a picture showing a couple of the elements of the car's interior. Bugatti says they're only going to make 40 of this new car called the Devo. The full car itself is going to be unveiled on August the 24th. Yeah, John Scalzi's his attention. See that? He got up. Right. <laughs> Looking ahead to next summer, the new aquatic center is set to open in Northport. City commissioners approve the budget and the hours for the new facility. It's under construction right now. Admission will be $8 for Northport residents, 6 for kids, 12 for non-residents. The pool will be open year-round except Wednesdays. The lap pool, lazy river, and children's play area will have different hours of operation depending on the season. Well, if you're in need of a job here on the Sun Coast, here's an opportunity you don't want to miss. Career Source is going to be hosting a job fair next Tuesday at the Van Wezel Performing Arts Hall in Sarasota. More than 30 employers from all over the area are going to be meeting with job seekers there to interview and even hire right on the spot. Manatee County Government, Spectrum, Sarasota Memorial Hospital, the Manatee County Sheriff's Office, Ringling Museum, and many more are all going to be participating in the job fair. It's being held from 10 to 3. It's open to the public. Make sure you bring copies of your resume, any certificates that you hold, and of course, dress to impress. The Rays have unveiled their plans for a new stadium in Ybor City. The big question is, where will the money come from? After playing in St. Petersburg for 20 years and having the lowest attendance in the league, the Rays are ready to move toward downtown Tampa. The $892 million ballpark will have a translucent roof, not a retractable dome. It still remains unclear how the stadium will be paid for. Either way, some think Ebor is a good location. It sits not only in the, in the center of the, of the city with the urban core and Ebor, it's also the center of the Tampa Bay. It's the heart of Tampa Bay, you know, between St. Petersburg and, and uh, New Tampa, Lakeland and Clearwater. You know, within a 30 minute drive distance around the ballpark, we capture 1.6 million of our community residents. 
Now, the Rays deal at Tropicana Field runs through 2027, but they can negotiate an early departure. Well, tomorrow, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Secretary Ben Carson is going to be right here in Sarasota. He's going to be taking part in a book giveaway for kids in subsidized housing. He plans on visiting the Sarasota Housing Authority Early Childhood Learning Center. Still to come, a new dance challenge is going viral. Take notes, Ray, because we're going to be trying it. After the break, we're going to show you the Drake-inspired dance. The Drake. They're going to do it. Here's a it's live. the Shiggy. Okay, I look forward to that. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Here's a live shot from Thailand outside the hospital where 12 kids and their soccer coach are recovering now after being trapped in a cave for 18 days. They'll be quarantined for up to a week. Now, the kids have lost weight. The four boys rescued on Sunday. They eat normal food and walk around, and the four pulled out Monday were eating soft food. All right, the average weight loss was about four pounds, but overall, in all, the health is pretty decent. No real major health concerns, considering what it could have been. Oh, so. yeah, could have been a lot worse. Wow. All right, let's check the forecast now. Here's John Skulls. So we look at a little bit of rain shower activity again today. Now, what you're looking at here is the Doppler-derived amount of rain we received yesterday. And you can see some places saw over an inch of rainfall, so some pretty good downpours in places. Most places you know, didn't get the rain, but some places did. Uh, again, today, we'll see those spor sporadic showers popping up here and there. That that's a good thing because the area of fire danger risk in the moderate category is increasing on the west coast of Florida. So we certainly could use a little bit more rainfall around here. Air quality index this morning uh, better than it was yesterday. It's now down to 37, which puts it solidly in the good category. Ozone, the major contributor. We'll have the complete forecast for you coming up in just a few. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He went through seizures. We'd much rather have Aaron like this than dead. A lot of parents don't have that luxury. He can't talk. He can't walk. This is a condition Aaron will live with for the rest of his life because he abused prescription pills. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. The ABC7 First Alert weather app just got even better. It's easy to use once you download it. First, tell the app to follow you, so you get alerts pinpointed to exactly where you are. Then customize your settings with all the places you go, from the beach to grandmother's house. Get accurate alerts for everyone you care about. You can even pick which weather alerts and categories you want and what they sound like. More ways to customize and more ways to keep your family safe. Download the ABC7 First Alert weather app today. You now have the power to prioritize your Facebook feed and get local news and information from the team you trust. Go to the ABC7 Sarasota page on Facebook. Give us a like, then click following and choose See First. That's it. Customize even more by choosing notifications. Choose breaking news, posts, live videos, anything you want to see in real time. Take control of your news feed and stay connected to what's happening in your community with ABC7 on Facebook. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always place the nation first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at nationalguard.com. My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.com employflorida.com
Now your ABC7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Air temperature comes in at 77 degrees this morning. We have a mix of cloud and fair skies. 78 degrees our feels like temperature. Pretty much the same as the air temperature. Dew point values are warm coming in at 75. Again, that's going to lead to a very sticky afternoon. High humidity at uh, the time we get to yeah, probably around 3, 4 o'clock. Looking at a feels like temperature at that point <clears throat> at 100 to 105. So as we head through the day, 12 noon temperature coming in at about 90 already. And then as we progress through the afternoon, we'll start to think about a chance of a shower by 3 p.m. About a 10 percent. That's it. Uh, mostly in inland areas. Um, then as we head into the 7 p.m. hour, I think better chances of rain for everyone. And that will be a little bit closer to the coastline as well as the East Coast sea breeze moves into our area once again uh, overnight. Expect to see some clearing and some fairly quiet conditions. Showers and thunderstorms building along a line of showers in inland areas, then moving out into Gulf waters. That's what we saw yesterday. Uh, Chris continues to pull away from the United States, and high pressure builds into the central Gulf. Those are the weather features that are on the map this morning. Locally, things very quiet. A thunderstorm just offshore of Pinellas County, bringing you a little bit of a light show. If you're traveling over the Skyway Bridge early this morning before dawn, you'll see that out there in the Gulf. That is not moving closer to us. None of these showers are. Those are not the ones that will bring us the afternoon rains. They have yet to develop, and they will develop in inland areas. Chris continues to be a formidable Category 2 hurricane, but of really no bother to anyone except shipping interests. It will move, and it already is starting to move, fairly rapidly off to the north and to the east. Forward speed now coming in at about 20. We have uh, what was left over of barrel, continuing to monitor that. Some chance there of regeneration, but even if it does, it moves out into the open waters of the Atlantic following in the footsteps of Chris. So we have no issues right now with tropical systems impacting the state of Florida, except this one little upper level tropical uh, trough of low pressure that's located right near the Bahamas. That one will swing through the Florida Straits a little bit later on this afternoon, just as one did yesterday and help to enhance some rainfall chances for the southern tip of the state, especially, but also in our area, combining with the East Coast sea breeze. High pressure builds in over the next few days and brings us a westerly wind flow as we head into the weekend. That will encourage a few morning showers near the coast, but then tend to take all of these showers that we see developing today and push them toward the east coast as we head into the weekend. That'll be a favorite location for shower development. So we get mostly sunny skies today, a few evening showers and better weekend rain chances, but the timing of the showers will be a little bit different. Uh, we'll watch the future cast today, build those showers again, popping up in inland areas first and then gradually, gradually drifting back to the coastline as we head into the evening. So we look for a nice day out on the waters, except for those scattered showers around, but they're pretty far offshore right now. Southwest wind at about 10 knots, becoming more westerly at 10. And the forecast calling for a daytime high of 92 today. Tomorrow about the same, 20% chance of showers both days. Then as we head into the weekend, we'll boost the rain chance up to about 40%, close to about average for this time of year. We'll watch for morning showers near the coast, inland showers as we head into the afternoon, and we'll carry the rain chance into next week at about 40 or 50%. Pretty standard for this time of year. Back to you. All right, thanks so much, John. Let's check out your first alert traffic out there this morning. Not too bad so far in Manatee County. The roads are running pretty decent. We do have a couple slowdowns right there on State Road 70, which is pretty normal for around this time of the morning. 301 and State Road 70 is always our big hot spot in Manatee County. Then in Sarasota County, just a couple little slowdowns right there. One on Bee Ridge Road between 41 and 75. And then again, a couple on uh, 41, just running a little bit slower than normal. And as you can see on the bottom part of your screen, as you come off of 75 and head uh, west on Clark. There's a couple little slowdowns in that area as well. Then if you're headed a little bit farther south, both 75 and 41 are running pretty decent out there so far. That is your traffic at 548. A Long Island couple just welcomed their 10th baby. Look at this. The Hernandez family now has five boys and five girls all within 15 years. At first, a couple planned on having no kids, but that decision didn't last for long. One child is great, and then two and three. It doesn't matter how many I have. Love it. This is my life. I love uh, being a mother. Good thing. Family lives comfortably in a eight-bedroom home, brand new extension, 
and a steady supply of extended family to round out child care. Good thing. Well, if you and your friends weren't into doing the Harlem Shake or you're just tired of doing the Macarena at all those weddings, we got a new dance challenge for you this morning. And allegedly, reportedly, anybody can do it. Reporter Elise Finch is going to show us how it's done right now. In My Feelings is the title of a new song by rapper Drake. Its popularity is exploding on social media in part because of the dance that goes with it. It's called The Shiggy. It was created by and named after this Queens man. The aspiring actor, singer, and comedian posted a video of himself doing his dance on Instagram. It went viral, getting millions of views and inspiring people to try the dance themselves. The song, I just heard it and automatically like felt like I got to dance to it. Honestly, I dance a lot on my Instagram to songs and stuff like that, but it wasn't until like Odell Beckham Jr., he got it all started with the do the shiggy movement. Now it's everywhere, like everybody's doing it. It's now known as the In My Feelings Challenge and has people of all ages getting shiggy with it on social media and on the streets of New York City. It's everywhere. So we started watching it and we started learning it, yeah. Honestly, I'm not too into rap music, but Drake is so amazing. I feel like shiggy definitely made me like the song more, but it was a banger from Jump. The creator of the viral video challenge says he thinks it's caught on so quickly because it's so easy to do. He says there's only four basic moves and anyone can do them. You hit the heart, you hit the drive in, you hit the no, and you put it to the side. The 25 year old says the rest of the dance is whatever you decide to make it. People we spoke to said it's just fun. It makes me feel happy. It's safe and it's fun and the kids enjoy it. Because then it's an opportunity to just do something fun together. Rapper Drake was even seen doing the Shiggy at a show recently. Come on, Ray. All right, so it starts We're with the heart. It starts with the heart. Yeah. Yep. You've got to make and the then heart. Then and then you got to do the drive. All right. Can do I stretch? I'm going to go stretch first. Ray, no? do the drive. Okay, I'm ready. Ready? And then you do the no. All right. And then you throw it to the side. Okay, throw I'm going to gonna throw up something. Ready? One, two, two three, three. We're gonna five. Oh! I owe you, Jim Clark. Come on. I got Look at that pretty shot. I'm doing the best shiggy you guys have ever seen. I owe Jim Clark lunch right now. Oh. 551, the day's top news headlines straight I'm ahead. <laughs> I'll be doing the shiggy in the hallway. Stay with us. I was always worried and scared. Mom was in pain. She wasn't going to get any better. And all the trips to the ER were painful for all of us. Then we called Tidewell Hospice and everything changed. Now she has care in our home when she needs it, surrounded by family. We know we don't have much time left with mom, but we decided to make the best out of that time. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service. It's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. That is a pretty good breakfast. You're not even eating. Not hungry. No? Why not? What's up? Kath and I knew that Jenny had been partying a bit. Found out she tried heroin. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org.
You are the best protection she has. Buddy up. I'm Jill Harrington. Please visit HelpSaveTheNextGirl.com and get involved. Hunger is a growing problem in our area, and a huge number of Suncoast residents are suffering in silence. It could be your coworker, your child's classmate, or your friend fighting to secure their next meal. But you can help. ABC7 is partnering with local organizations to help feed the Suncoast. Go to MySuncoast.com slash hunger to join the fight. Help us. Help the hungry. Welcome back. It is 554, and here are some of the top stories that we've been following for you on the Sun Coast today. Taxes are going up in the city of Sarasota. Commissioners approved the city manager's request for an increase. The city is already receiving nearly a billion extra dollars due to higher property values. Plus, if you live in Manatee County, there's an app that you can now have that will keep you up to date with any crimes that are happening in your area in real time. It's called Neighbors, and you can actually download it for free right now. The Tampa Bay Rays unveiled plans for a new dome stadium in Ybor City. The 28,000 seat stadium would still be the smallest in Major League Baseball. And now let's get a final look at the weather from John Scalzi. That is a pretty sharp looking concept though, I have to say. Yeah, right? yeah, it looks it nice. It does, doesn't it? So we have a couple of highlights for you today. I think we'll see a few late showers once again. We'll look for hot afternoon highs. Feels like temperatures 100, 105, stay hydrated. And no tropical troubles currently for us, despite the fact that we're continuing to watch two systems out in the Atlantic. Back to you. Thank you, John. So that stadium looks beautiful, but no word how to pay for it. Right, that becomes a hard part. But I do like the idea of having it in Ebor too. I think that's interesting concept. Different. It's closer for us down here, though. It is. Right now in St. Petersburg. Yeah, I agree. All right, more news next hour on Good Morning Suncoast.